Um, so today we're going to talk about arts and cultural production, but in the process we're also going to talk about several other things like benchmark input output tables, annual input output tables, and GDP by industry. Um, those are the products that my office produces, and it was those tools that allowed us to build this window onto arts and cultural production. But before I start, I want to thank the uh, research staff um, at the research library here at Department of Commerce. They've been very helpful to me in getting this presentation uh, put together. Um, and there's two individuals I want to thank before I really start to get into the presentation. Um, one is uh, one of my staff, Steve Zemanik. Um, his tireless work on building the account using the database from the Benchmark I.O. was absolutely integral in producing these statistics. And a second person is with the National Endowment for the Arts, and that's Bonnie Nichols. Without her work, uh, really helping us understand the spread of art and culture in the economy. So we understood the economy, we're BEA, we do GDP, we do benchmark IO tables, but it was the National Endowment for the Arts who was our partner on this project. They had the scope and understood how pervasive, and that's used in a good way, how pervasive art is. Never a bad idea to quote your boss. Um, Secretary Pritzker took a strong interest in the account when we first published it in December of 2013, and then again took an interest in it when we released revised statistics last December. The work itself began in 2012, and again, it was two very different agencies, BEA, Bureau of Economic Analysis, and NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, I have, over the course of my career, worked with many agencies, but never one like the National Endowment for the Arts that had this, this um, focus on art and culture. The first statistics were released December 2013. Those were based on the 2002 benchmark input-output table, which I'm going to show you a very gentle introduction to benchmark I.O. accounts. In December 2014, we released revised set of statistics, and those statistics we moved from the 2002 benchmark I.O. to the 2007 benchmark I.O. And actually, it's very interesting for arts, the 2007 benchmark I.O. presents a very different presentation, which was very important to this account. And then most recently, on January 22nd, we published an article in the Survey of Current Business. That's BEA's monthly journal. It's on our website, BEA.gov. And that really walks you through the account in more detail than I will be presenting today. But then also, if you go to NEA's website, arts.gov, not NEA.gov, arts.gov, you will find a lot of the same statistics, but also they've, they've taken the ACPSA that BEA produced and then taking it a, a step forward with um, several briefing papers that provide a lot of uh, uh, detail. So we need to take a step back. So what are satellite accounts? I've thrown this term out a couple of times now. We're not talking about anything from NASA, um, nothing like Sputnik or anything like that. I've, I've had people come up to me like, what, what do you mean by that? So a satellite account basically means it is fee or being fed by the main accounts, but it doesn't disturb the main account. Um, two types of satellite accounts. One is to further the science of national accounting. And there's two examples there. The R&D satellite account, BEA moved expenditures for R&D from an expense to an investment. But before we did that, because BEA always telegraphs to our users what we're going to do, why we're going to do it, and then we pre present it in this preview uh, format so that everybody gets comfortable with the new concept before it's brought into the accounts. So for five years, BEA had this R&D satellite account. 
We made changes to how we deflated the estimates. We made changes to the source data. And then in uh, the summer of 2013, that satellite account graduated to become part of GDP. So that satellite account is no longer being updated. It is in the national income and product accounts, the NIPAs. Just this month, we released our healthcare satellite account. Again, the purpose of that account is to experiment and to allow the public to gain knowledge and comfort with new concepts in how to measure healthcare by disease instead of by service is just one thing. It's a really good article. It's on BEA's website now. So that's the first type of satellite account. The second type is what we're going to discuss today. And again, I have two examples here. So the second type of satellite account, it's really a distillation of this massive benchmark I.O. table so that a particular community can get information fairly easily. So if we think of travel and tourism, could you go to the input output table and get some sense of, yeah, okay, I understand what, what travel and tourism is. Yes, you could. However, there's multiple industries where the entire industry is not tourism. A portion of the industry is. Restaurant meals would be one. So if we go, so it's January, if we go to Miami, walk into a restaurant, ask people, are you a tourist? Oh, probably 90% raise their hand. But if you go to North Dakota right now, ask people, are you a tourist? Probably a significantly smaller percent will say, oh, I'm a tourist. So we use external data, apply it to those values from the benchmark I.O. table to create this travel and tourism satellite account. The arts and cultural production satellite account is similar in that it's a distillation of the I.O. table. So what we've done is we've gone into this rich detail from the benchmark I.O., which I'll show you shortly, and identified those industries and commodities that are art and culture related. But then there's some that were clearly not 100% art and culture related. There was a portion of that item, an item is a detailed commodity. There was a portion of that that needed to come into the account. And so that's when working with NEA, working with our industry experts in the industry accounts directorate, we could go in and even though we were at the most detailed level, we could create more details still. So those two types of satellite accounts. So we built the account from the bottom up. That was, that's really important. Um, we, we didn't look at the economy from the top and say, okay, what's art and culture? We were literally at the bottom of the benchmark I.O. table, 7,000 plus commodities, items, goods and services, and literally we're working with staff from the NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, we're going back and forth and saying, is this, is this, should this be there, should that be there? And we ended up with about 400 items. Some of those were partial, some of those were whole that flowed into the account. It's a really simple seven step process to create this satellite account, and actually the other satellite accounts as well. So we identify the commodities, the process I just laid out. Once you identify the commodities, you kind of have your industries. If an industry makes a commodity you've identified as inclusive, well, that industry is one of yours. Then we identified the portions or the partials. This got somewhat complicated. I'm going to show you a few examples uh, later on of how we were able to bring in external data and say, OK, I'm at the most detailed piece of information I can get from that benchmark I.O. table, but now I need something to split that into creative, not, not creative. Then we estimate an output, and that kind of falls out of the I.O. table. Uh, I'm simplifying that a little bit. And then from the I.O., we can bring in value added, then employment and compensation, and, and then we're going to talk about this a little bit using benchmark I.O. coefficients, we can bring in what we call indirect output and indirect employment. And I'll, I'll show that a little bit later. So one of the earliest meetings that we had with the director of BEA, he's, he's now retired, um, 
we were walking through what we expected to put into this account, and we had a list of industries, and being good economists, the industries were ordered by NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System. The first code was NAICS 2.3, and that's construction. And so I remember the director looking at the list and saying, oh, construction, you guys, are, are you sure you know what you're doing? So we went back and we did research and found this model from Professor Throsby of Macquarie University, who I actually met. He's a very nice guy. And it, it presents a really nice way to walk through the core art and culture and then the exterior portion of the supporting industries for art and culture. So my choice was to show you something like this or to show you a table of benchmark IO commodity coefficients, and I think this is the, the better choice to, to look at. Um, so if you place yourself in this innermost circle, core creative arts, which I'll show you what is in there in a second, think about the goods and services provided by other industries that helped put you in that seat. So you're at the ballet, enjoying it, of course, but then you had to become aware of the ballet, so that is likely some advertising. It's quite likely you enjoyed a drink or some food before walking into the ballet. So there's accommodations, food services, so now we're already getting into some other sectors of the economy. Um, you're probably, if you're at the ballet, you're probably not in your friend's backyard. You're probably inside a structure that was built, maybe not for ballet exclusively, but for performing arts. So using that benchmark I.O., we can go in and say, well, okay, construction, and I'll show you a little detail. I can grab a piece of construction, and I can grab a piece of the architectural services that designed the building, and then the building itself that you're sitting in enjoying the ballet. And we can add up these values with the I.O. table. So let's look at the first, the inner circle. So here, this is the most intuitive part of the account, literature, music, performing arts, visual arts. It's actually a greater value than I feared. When we first, when we first ran these estimates and we started to do bar charts, um, I thought, well, movies is, is going to just be huge compared to performing arts. But even though I'm an economist, I tend to think of, of counts. So I go to the movies more often than I go to the ballet. But obviously, uh, each experience at the ballet is a little bit more money. and, and because we're using I.O. tables, we're, we're bringing in dollars. We're not bringing in experiences. So now we move into the next uh, circle. Um, so think about how does art get to the audience? Um, you can create an amazing piece of art, but if it's in a closet and no one's looking at it but the, the creator or the owner, then you really haven't uh, disseminated that experience, that art hasn't really gotten out there. Uh, but if you place it in a museum, or take a picture of it and distribute the picture or uh, film, then you've, you've affected a large number of people. And again, looking at the benchmark I.O. table, we can place a value on this relationship as we move to these outer circles. So now the model is showing us this dissemination concept of art and culture. Computer games. This, uh, there's a few places where BEA paused and we had a little debate and, and had to get comfortable in saying, yeah, that should be in this account. Um, I, I don't play computer games, but when I did some research, the modern computer games are incredibly creative. I mean, they are art that you control with a joystick. The Modern Museum of Art in New York even did a display of um, art. It was called Art in the Form of Video Games, and it even traveled to other museums in the United States. So very artistic, without a doubt, very creative, without a doubt. But we had to separate out computer game software from other types of software. If you look at your standard account, that's going to be very difficult to do. But using the benchmark I.O. table, we have that rich detail. So we were able to separate out computer 
game software from application software and database software. We clearly didn't want those to reside in this account. So MS Office is not in this account. Now, ironically, SQL and SAS, those were the languages that my office used to create the account, but those languages are not in the account itself. I was thinking about that yesterday. Um, a few other areas where we had uh, to achieve a comfort level were uh, zoos, architectural services, and I'll talk about those when we uh, get to a later slide. Okay, now we're at the, the outer edge, and so we're really looking at industries that support and disseminate art and culture. And oftentimes we're looking at an industry here where despite using the benchmark IO table, we needed even more detail than it could provide. And so the beauty of the way we produce this account, working with National Endowment for the Arts, so we had access to the working level benchmark IO table, and you'll get tired of me saying that if you're not already, but we also had access to the analyst that created that working level. And in several cases, we went to the analyst and said, okay, this is your estimate, but I need you to split that. I need you to split that into a creative and non-creative portion. Sometimes, for some of the analysts, all they had to do was to go to that rich detail from the census product line from the five-year census. So fashion, our last industry here. Obviously, fashion is very creative, but obviously there's a lot of repetitive activity in fashion. We didn't want to bring in the repetitive activity. Um, designing a fancy button, that merits creativity, that merits to be in the account, but the person that's creating thousands of those buttons does not merit being in the account. So with the detailed census data, we found NAICS code, for those familiar with NAICS codes, 541490, clothing design services. So we were able to separate out from fashion or clothing the, the design concept. So that made it into the account. One of the others is architectural services, the second industry here. This was interesting because the first set of accounts that were published in December 2013, BEA took a very conservative view of architectural services. Basically we said, if the architect is designing a structure that will house art, a museum, a movie house, a performing hall, performance hall, that architectural service will be brought into the account. By doing that, we ended up at about two or three percent. What we didn't realize at the time was that NEA considers architectural services itself artistic, creative, and in fact, they give awards. In fact, uh, our secretary, her family is involved in something called the Pritzker Prize for Architecture. It's a very big deal. And so in the second set of estimates that were revised and published just this last December, we, BEA, did a lot of research and we were not convinced that 100% of architectural services should be in the account. But we knew, I mean, if you look at some of the bridges and some of the buildings, clearly that's creative. I mean, that is not, that is not cookie cutter architecture. That's something where um, the architect is absolutely creating a new concept, a new idea. So we used um, data from, it's called WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization. And what we said was, with help from NEA, what we said was, if the product is subject to copyright, then it must be unique, then we can include it in the account. And so we ended up with about 75% of architectural services in the account in the second set of uh, estimates that were published last December. So that was an upward revision there. Actually, that's trivial compared to something that came to the account just based on the comprehensive revision of the NIPAs, but we'll, we'll cover that in a second. So the big question, where are we? So what percent of GDP is art and culture? So this is for 2012, art and culture, as measured by BEA in this account, is 4.3% of GDP. That's $699 billion. Travel and tourism in that same year was 2.6. $428 billion. 
These figures are nominal. They're not adjusted for inflation. Um, our plan is to bring in price indexes and create chain dollar estimates in a future update of the statistics. Given our methodology that it was bottom up as opposed to top down, um, we feel that this very defendable, the way the account was built. I'll show you the time series in a second. Um, and you'll see that it tracks reasonably well with total economy GDP. A few countries have, we're not the first country to go down this road. BEA is pretty conservative. So we, we looked at a lot of other countries that have been involved in these type of statistics. Um, Developed countries fall in a certain range and lesser developed countries fall in a certain range. Um, some countries in Europe have included sports in their art and culture account. Um, probably that's because they have a, a minister of culture and sport. And if I'm the minister of culture and sport, I'm not gonna say goodbye to sports. I'm gonna leave that in my satellite account. But w for, this, for the purposes of this account, we definitely wanted sports out. And we actually went through some uh, pretty um, strong measures to keep sports out. So even, even when you look at advertising, we're able to get the creative portion of advertising and leave out sports advertising. Okay, so this, uh, this didn't come out as well as I hoped. Um, so this is a representative table. If you go to our website or NEA's website, you'll find more detail. So these are just some of the components that make up the account. So we, we have this broad split of core and support. And these, so these estimates were not dictated by the Throsby circles that we showed earlier. The Throsby circles is a really good way of, of walking you through the relationship as opposed to showing you benchmark IO coefficients. Um, design services the third industry, that's a compound industry. So again, one of the advantages of working with detailed benchmark IO data is that we can create these uh, hybrid, I'm not sure I like that word, but sort of a hybrid industry. So design services, if you go through your NAICS manual and you look at our detailed data, it's actually nine, it's made up of nine different NAICS coded industries. Things like architectural services, interior design services, graphic design services. And, and as I mentioned before, many of these industries are not 100% included. We've been able to go in and, and restrict um, the industry to the creative portion. So again, that, that overriding concern of include the creative, exclude the repetitive. So now we're looking at the time series of art and cultural production value added compared to total economy value added or GDP. The, the, the blue line is GDP and that's obviously on the left axis. So what we see is art is more sensitive to the recent contraction in the business cycle and that's not terribly surprising. I need food, I need shelter, <laughs> I need clothing, I may not need as much art and culture if the economy contracts. Uh, during the last recession, art and culture fell deeper than GDP, and then during the expansion, uh, it recovered more slowly than GDP. Now this time series, it runs 1998 to 2012. That is because of the time series of annual IO tables that my office has created from the benchmark IO tables that my office also creates. So that time series is, is um, is fixed, we'll add a year, each year we'll add a year and revise a couple of years. Employment. Not surprising that we see this large dip from the Great Recession in employment. Now, unfortunately, what we don't see is the recovery of employment after the end of the recession. So ACPSA employment has not yet recovered and again, so the, what, what we're talking about here is those industries and those parts of industries that were included in the account. So if we had a partial 
and we said 75% of output should be in the ACPSA, we're gonna take 75% of employment. We're not making some sort of productivity assumption that would say the artistic portion is more or less productive than the non-artistic portion. That seemed, that might be an interesting research moving forward, but that's not something that we engaged in for, for this set of estimates. Now I promised you uh, a little bit of IO analysis, some input output. Make table and use table. So this tells us who makes what. We are able to populate this every five years, primarily using data from the Census Bureau's Census of Manufacturing, Census of Wholesale, Retail Trade, and Services. Obviously, this, this is a square I.O. table, actually. Um, in reality, a benchmark I.O. table is more like 8,000 by 5,000 cells. And in reality, it's not one, it's a stack of more like 14. And the reason there's 14 is that I have to get you from producer's value, the money you receive for making a product, to purchaser's value, the money that you pay to receive the product or service. And in between those are those margin slices. So we have wholesale trade, retail trade, transportation margin, air, rail, water, pipe, and truck. Obviously for art, I don't think there was any pipeline margin. Certainly was truck. Uh, think about musical instruments. So someone makes a musical instrument and then you go to a store to purchase a musical instrument. So certainly wholesale retail trade margin is there. And again, we can pull it out because it's there in the I.O. table. We didn't have to really develop some sort of new concept. The benchmark I.O. table has it. We just had to identify the item that was in the ACPSA and the margin was there. So the reason they're not square is that one industry makes multiple products. And um, one thing I wanted to mention, th so these IO tables, they're not synthetic, they're not modeled. Um, they come from data provided to every establishment, literally every, every establishment that the census can find every five years. And the blank forms are on their website. They are not short. They are long forms, and they are uh, detailed by industry. So in other words, an insurance company would receive a very different census form than um, a retail trade industry or a trucking industry. And so the goal is to find not just total revenue. You can get that any year. You can get that in a quarter. But to find out what are you making and what are the multiple types of products that you're making. And then this next table is even more important. So this is a simplified use table. So what this does, and this is very important to our accounts, what did you need to purchase in order to make what you sold? We only get this every five years. Um, table seven, materials consumed by kind, if you really want to go to Census's website and see what it is. And the list can be quite long. And it's usually not surprising, but once in a while you'll find something that like, oh, they, they needed that in order to make their good or service. And again, uh, for the ACPSA, we didn't need to go in and create this set of estimates. They were already there in the benchmark IO table. And also, this is not just domestically produced. So there's a concept called domestic supply. So we know that we make goods and services here. We export goods and services, and then we import goods and services. And then if it's a good, we can also have inventory. So we do all that math, and then we end up with the concept of domestic supply in a given year. That's what's available for consumption in that year. So, uh, uh, well, this is a really simple example, but so books, most books would be in the ACPSA. They purchase paper to make the books, and that paper would show up here. That's a very simple example, but it works. So how did we do this input-output to ACPSA? So there's another concept of, uh, it's called the creative chain, and it's in the literature on how uh, to develop these accounts. And again, the I.O. table can put a value on each one of those links, which is pretty impressive. So think about somebody composing a symphony. Then the performance is recorded in a studio. So that's a transaction that show up in the benchmark I.O. table. Then they distribute that product 
uh, in the old days it would be a, a record or a CD. Now it's probably downloaded. But still there's a good chance we've got some margin to attach to that product. And then eventually it's consumed. So in this case, you're listening to it. Um, there's a lot of free music, so this, this wasn't necessarily the cleanest example to use. But um, even free music, if there's advertising as you stream the song, then there's still a, a transaction. So how did we define culture? This, in the early stages of developing this account, um, it, it gave us pause, the idea that, that you know, a statistical agency is going to define culture. I, don't, I really don't think we did define culture. Um, by working with National Endowment for the Arts and then this rich detail from the benchmark I.O. table, the 7,000 items and commodities, um, we basically distilled from that benchmark I.O. table all the items that were art and culture. And we left sports out. That's an important point. So in 2002, I, I updated this to show 2007, but the, the first set of estimates were actually based on the 2002 benchmark. And that was kind of interesting. So the normal course of events is that um, we have a benchmark I.O. table, and then we don't do another benchmark I.O. for five years. In between, we have annual I.O. tables. We started this work and had to use the 2002 benchmark I.O. table because the 2007 was not yet complete. However, it was being worked on, so we actually were able to view the development work of the 2007 benchmark I.O., but we had to use the 2002. But literally within 12 months, we were in the process of not doing a typical annual revision where you would just revise two years at a third. We were actually doing a comprehensive revision and bringing in a new benchmark. And this new benchmark had some uh, strong effects that I'll show in a second. So again, the concept of separating the creative from the repetitive, and again, using that detail, um, it was often possible. And then once we had that item, we could then use the, the coefficients from the I.O. table to grab um, portions of other industries that are necessary to support the industry of, of focus. So construction, I talked about this earlier, but it's worth uh, talking about a little bit just because it's interesting and uh, there's no disclosure issues with construction data for the most part. As soon as you apply for a building permit, that's generally public knowledge, and so it can be uh, discussed down to the, to the micro level. So early on, we knew that we should grab some part of construction, but we didn't know how much, what part. We started to do some research. BEA uses data from census. Uh, the program is called Value Put in Place, VPIP, and that becomes the res, non-res um, construction data for the I.O. tables, also for the NIPAs, for GDP. So we went to Census and talked to them, and they put us in touch with their data source because they actually don't go out to 3,000 counties in the United States and collect this data. So we went to their data source and started having conference calls, and uh, we had this list of structures that we thought should be there. So we had auditoriums, libraries, museums, concert halls, zoos. Zoos was a little, we hesitated, and then we decided zoos is simply a museum whose exhibit is alive because they, they, they have a lot of the same production process and a lot of the same issues. Um, what are we going to display? How do we generate interest? How do we store our collection? Obviously, storing your collection is a little different when it's a tiger versus a Monet, but it's still you're storing your collection. So we were able to go to that data provider and using the exact same concept, they were able to give us value put in place for those structures. And so we were able to run the time series just like we would if it were a typical industry, but it was just the art and cultural production structures. And it was about 
which is not significant in the realm of GDP or construction as a whole, but for this account, it was absolutely appropriate. Uh, like I mentioned before, if you're, if you're at the ballet, you're probably not in your friend's backyard. You're in some, well, maybe not here, but you're in some structure that was designed for performing arts. And so it's totally valid to bring the value of that construction in. Food. So food uh, clearly would be in the account when the food is purchased on the premises of the venue. That's clearly in there. Now, could we go in and divine the fact that 10% of people that go to the ballet go to dinner before, and then which restaurants do they go to? No. We, we were not able to do that sort of analysis. That's, it's actually interesting, we did talk about it. Um, and uh, NEA has studies about arts participation, and so the, there's, it's conceivable that you then grab a piece of travel and tourism satellite account, um, because satellite accounts are not uh, exclusive. They certainly overlap. In fact, there's a, there's a hotel in New York that hired an artist to do caricatures of its guests so that they could then put it on their Facebook page. And so it was a promotional thing, but I remember reading that article because we had been talking about keeping the satellite accounts separate, and I don't know how you would separate that. It's clearly art, and it was clearly in the travel and tourism satellite account, so we, we did not. So that's, that's how we brought construction in. And I, I, again, I talk about that because I can. There's, there's no disclosure issues. So I mentioned the initial set of estimates were for 2002, and then immediately we brought in the 2007 benchmark I.O. table. New benchmarks generally will bring in new concepts of how to do national accounts. BEA is a strong believer in the SNA, the System of National Accounts. Uh, I usually bring it with me, but I didn't today, but it's a thick manual, and it's literally the instruction manual on how to do national accounting. They recommend that entertainment originals be capitalized. So instead of being expensed, it directly affects value-added GDP. Things like motion pictures, television programs, books, music, and recordings. So instead of being expensed, it would go straight to value-added. Well, we knew that this was going to be a significant change to the ACPSA, and it was. Now, when we're talking television, we don't mean the nightly news. We mean long-lived television. And my example is a show that we've all heard of called Seinfeld. So in 1989, a production company invested in a show called Seinfeld. It ran for 10 years. It was syndicated. There were commercials each week as you watched it. And today, if you go online, it's $300 to purchase those episodes. That was a good investment. And so it's absolutely appropriate that that be treated that way and that it not be uh, consumable like electricity or fuel, that it be treated as investment. So how much money are we talking about? It's a fair amount of money, $76 billion in 2012. And here's the list, 22 billion in movies, motion pictures, down to 3 billion in other. I didn't list out other. I actually, I realize now I had the room, but I didn't, and I don't remember exactly what, what it is. It, but it's on our website. It's on one of our NIPA tables. And um, there's several articles on the concept and the method of developing these estimates to capitalize entertainment originals. So the question is, did all of this, sure. Just to clarify, mm -hmm. that isn't the like, continuing I just wanted to ask, just to clarify, that is the cost that was to make those. Right, the expense right? of the investment. But that, it's not expense, in that. it's investment. Yeah, okay. yeah, That's right, good. right. Okay. But again, for the ACPSA, we kept out sports. So if there was a book on sports, we wanted to keep that out. We were able to do that, again, because we had that benchmark I.O. detail. So a book on SQL programming, 
And again, so SQL programming created the account, but the book on SQL programming, we didn't want in the account, so it's not there. Satellite accounts uh, evolve. Um, the travel and tourism satellite account, it predates my arrival at BEA, but in my time there, it was originally annual only. It was originally nominal only, so it was not adjusted for price change. And with travel and tourism, you're talking jet fuel, motor vehicle fuel, it really needed to be adjusted for price change. Um, it was, it now is, but now it's also quarterly. So it's gone from annual nominal to quarterly chain dollar. So we're adjusting for those significant swings in, in fuel. We expect the ACPSA to evolve, not in a similar path, actually. Um, more frequent estimates is not desired at the time, but estimates at the state level are highly desired by the National Endowment for the Arts. They're charged with promoting art in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. BEA does GDP by state. They do that in part using data from the benchmark I.O. table. The benchmark I.O. And, and annual I.O. provide the industry control totals. So there's this relationship already between my office and the regional office to create GDP by state. So the, the expectation is that ACPSA by state should be a project that we can accomplish. We don't know for certain yet. We're still working on it. I'm not. Another office is. Um, but we believe it, it will be able to come back. Um, we've had feedback from user community. Americans for the Arts and others have contacted us and, and given us some um, ideas of how we can move the account forward. Um, we're going to refine the scope because we do that. that. Well, that'll happen for us anyway as we move to the 2012 benchmark. So the 2012 benchmark, work on that is just beginning in my office. As I mentioned, the, those forms that go to individual establishments, they have to fill out those forms, send it to census, and then lots of auditing and collection and collating and making sure that everything's fine. We're now getting the data that we can use to begin to populate the benchmark I.O. for 2012. 2017, census forms review is beginning. So my office and other offices in BEA and BLS will begin to look at the forms for 2017 and work with census in um, refining those forms. So each time a benchmark comes out, we tie the annual I.O. tables to that benchmark and then drive backwards to the prior benchmarks after revising for new concepts like entertainment originals and then that data feeds the satellite account. So I remember um, several months ago, someone from NEA asked me if Entertainment Originals was gonna come into the ACPSA, if I had plans to do that, and I hesitated, and then it, I didn't have specific plans, but I didn't need to, because I knew that we were gonna tie to the new I.O. tables. The new I.O. tables would bring in Entertainment Originals. So that system of accounts that flow um, is really important to the satellite accounts. So they're always being fed with a lag, the, the latest input output table. Now, so that's the flow benchmark to annual to satellite. The question is, can a satellite account provide information to the benchmark IO? And it can. The next um, benchmark IO table, I hope, I don't know that this is gonna happen, but I'm hoping that it provides travel insurance as a separate item, and if it does, I'd like to bring in travel insurance into the travel and tourism satellite account. Um, not a lot of money, but I think it would be, it would be helpful. It would help round out the account. Um, but it has to exist as an item in the benchmark in order to let it flow into the annual and then let it flow into the satellite. Performing arts detail. It, it actually could be greater in the 2012 benchmark than it is in the 2007 benchmark. So we're going to work with the staff in my office that is working on the benchmark 2012 and ask for more performing arts detail.
So we're trying to promote an understanding of the economy. The idea is that these statistics will help policymakers. That's the idea. Uh, and, and researchers, especially when we, if we have the state statistics. I don't want to say when. That's putting too much pressure on people. Uh, but, but if we have the state statistics. I will take any questions. 15 minutes, no, less. Um, and if anyone in the audience has questions, Karen has a microphone. And if any of the 80 or so people listening via WebEx have questions, feel free to chat them in and we'll ask Paul. Hi. <laughs> uh, it oh, seemed, <laughs> thinking about um, revenue associated with movies and televisions, and mm -hmm. it seems like more and more stuff is going on to computers and fewer and fewer people are going to TV theaters or even paying for television services. So is there any, um, in terms of tracking this data, do you track, you know, revenue, you know, you know, the com flows through Netflix compared to, you know, what goes to a movie theater? Sure, Netflix. sure. So we're talking about NAICS 5.1 information. It's a difficult sector because technology is just, technology is just breaking through these nice, clean industry categories. Like, oh, okay, I know what you do. Here's how you make your money. I know what you do. Here's how you make your money. And next thing you know, everybody's doing everything, but they're still trying to make money. And we're still counting that money. So Netflix, we, we count Netflix. Um, now, you have to remember, so our statistics are the structure of the economy as far as the I.O. tables are concerned. Right now is 2007. So we will have revenue streams that will have that new technology, but what the reality is we can't point to it and say, there's your item code for streaming from, uh, there's a little plug-in on your TV. Uh, I can't think of the names, but um, I can't point to that item in the 2007 benchmark I.O. for obvious reasons, um, but that stream of revenue flows into NAICS 5.1. NAICS 5.1 is in the I.O. table, and so yeah, I have that revenue. Paul, I'm wearing two hats today. One is the uh, tourism economist, and the second is the husband of a communications director of a ma of a area major art museum. So uh, I'm expected to come home tonight. You're with, dangerous. I'm, I'm expected to come home tonight with a <laughs> nugget, um, a big <laughs> nugget. And the one I've pulled out so far is that the art support category had the largest contribution to value added sure, behind sure. information. So I have a good sense, I better, of what art support is. But um, so what is, what is that information category? So, well, so information is, is basically NAICS 5.1. So we're talking, I mean, we're talking movies, streaming, um, going to the movies, um, the books. Um, it's, it's a huge sector. It, it, Oh, well, I mean, art support, to think about, um, you know, you could think about uh, rental of equipment, to the lighting. The, the detail sometimes is almost shocking, but we were able to grab rental of equipment by movie studios. And again, it was that benchmark I.O. detail. And I, when I read it, I, was, I thought, wow, that's in there. Um, and so, so that's art support. But I mean, obviously, um, um, you look at what government does, you know, we made every attempt to open up the government account and say, okay, you're, you're, you're supporting the art by doing this activity. You're, you're helping out your local community and supporting the arts by doing that activity and, and using those partials that I talked about. So the examples I gave with partials were the, the strong ones, the cleaner ones, the ones that were really easy to discuss. The government ones were a little trickier. And so we didn't give a lot of examples on those. Um, uh, yes, but um, so then you have art museums that could be government. You have art museums that you could pay a fee to walk in. Uh, so it's a right. So if you if you come to the BEA website or the NEA website and you can start to read some of the briefing. 
papers, especially on NEA's website, they delved into some of the, the specific details more, um, more in more depth than we did. Hi, this is Sally Gifford from the NEA Public Affairs. So just I wanted to let you know that we have translated the findings for an arts audience. And if you go to our website in the newsroom, we have a press release with some top line findings. We have infographics that break down the data in a very digestible, understandable way. Um, so please feel free to uh, let your, your uh, spouse know about that. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Hold on, I have them, Mark, I have them here. I can give them to you. The briefing book, the eight papers? Six. Oh, okay. Hopefully, my last question. What about Super Bowl advertising? You're trying to keep sports away from art. <laughs> we made, yeah, we, we, so we made every attempt along this, you know, using that creative chain wherever we thought we saw sports, we were able to get it out. So if you think about um, your major communications companies, BEA doesn't like to say names of companies, although I think I did earlier. But if you go to their annual reports, you can see not just Super Bowl revenue, advertising revenue, but Olympics. And of course, Olympics is easier to spot because bam, there it is, there it is. Super Bowl is, I mean, if you're looking at annual data, it's really easy to spot the Olympic revenue. So we were able to go into company data, publicly available, because they're all publicly traded companies, and say, okay, that's, that's revenue they received from sports, and then this is other revenue, all other revenue. And so we were able to create, again, those partials, create a split. Again, we went to our industry expert. We have an X51 industry expert. And we asked him, we said, you know, go in there and try to get sports out all along the chain. And he did, and creating a set of partials at each step. It, it, is, is every dollar of you know, sports out of the account? I, I, probably not, but wherever we could, we made it every attempt to remove sports revenue from the account. Uh, I, I noticed uh, that you did uh, chart uh, a dip uh, from the recent recession, but I'm kind of surprised that it wasn't more of a dip. I mean, I personally think I've experienced quite a dip in what kind of performing arts and entertainments that was available right. and the caliber of what was available and, you know, what's available now. But, Is there going so to be adjustments? So if the dip wasn't as strong as you expected, it might be because of something like uh, government art education, which may not be as sensitive to the business cycle. That, that may, and, and then, um, so maybe we didn't go to live performances, but maybe we more than made up for that by sitting at home and streaming movies. And so oftentimes, you, you know, you have your eye on a component of the account and you, you believe you see what the movement should be for that component, you're probably correct. If I had a chart of just that component, it probably would be a stronger dip. But it's those other activities, you know, we tend to substitute things, you know, um, and, and so it's quite likely that people started streaming movies more. Okay, we're not gonna go out. That's, you know, restaurant, taxi, uh, you know, $100 to sit in a seat for a live performance or more. But it turns out in the course of a month, you're streaming a lot of movies and you don't make up for it maybe, but you don't see the crater that you were expecting. Paul, we have someone asking, is education related to fine arts and culture included in the satellite account? It is, it is. Um, again, it becomes a little tricky when you're working with government education, government-sponsored education, but um, using data from National Center for Education Statistics and then uh, a few trade associations. And you can, so it's easy to identify somebody that earns a master's in fine arts, and clearly that should be in this account. That's easy. But it became a little more challenging to bring in um, uh, high school art education um, that got a little tricky, 
but that is in this account as well. So yes, art education is here. Paul, I think my, I have another question is related to, uh, you to this one. one. Well, I'm glad to share if no one else. Um, is there, uh, do you have a sense yet? Um, this may be partial answer to the question why there was less of a dip. Um, the relationship between this information and the consumer expenditure uh, survey and how we spend our money, because one of the things that I've noticed with tourism is since the recession, uh, they, you know, they show it by um, income quintile, and the upper uh, quintile of income is the only one that has are spending as much on tourism as it did five years Before. ago. Yeah, and uh, is there, do you expect any kind of relationship between the artsy type of information that's in there and this account? I'm gonna try not to use the word artsy. Okay, but. sorry, sorry, and I shouldn't either. I should get my hand slapped, but. Um, so we have not yet done that type of analysis. Um, I would say that BEA would probably leave that sort of analysis to NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts. They do several surveys which are on their website now on who, who consumes art, and I don't, but also barriers to enjoying art. And they've done surveys over the years on those topics. So I will leave that to the National Endowment for the Arts to. Um, I, I'm Bonnie Nichols. I work for the National Endowment for the Arts in the, the Office of Research and Analysis. And a few years ago, we took BEA's data on consumer spending on tickets to arts admissions, which is published by the BEA, and we tracked that with income and did find an, an income sensitivity. So that's on our website. Um, it was with the, um, it was a brochure with the 2008 Survey of Public Participation in the Arts. But yeah, there was an income elasticity, a sensitivity to, to changes in income. Thank you, Bonnie. Hello, thank Hi. you for coming today and giving this excellent presentation. I have two questions. Sure. First, and I understand you may not have the data available for this yet, but have you considered um, looking at social media such as Instagram and Flickr where people are posting their own creative expressions? And my second question is, have you considered the implications of illegal downloading of videos, um, music, and whatnot in your analysis? So to answer your second question first, it's, it's the policy of BEA that we do not attempt to measure illegal activity and bring it into the accounts. The, there are a few European countries that have started to go down this road of looking at illegal activity, um, valuing it, and placing it into their national income and product accounts. BEA has not gone down that road. Um, and your first question, again, I'm sorry. Social oh, social media. So again, the account is currently based on the structure of the 2007 benchmark IO. So the question is, I mean, just the fact that you could do an artistic tweet is, and, and you want to try to bring that into the account, um, we have gone through the item level detail for NAICS 5.1, and so we are grabbing everything that we feel is appropriate. Now, really your question can't be answered accurately until we do the 2012 benchmark, and maybe even in reality, the 2017 benchmark, and, and flesh out all the item, items, those detailed commodities that will appear that we can then pick and choose whether or not they come into the account. So a lot of times the satellite account has to kind of be patient for new concepts to flow into it. Uh, the entertainment originals flowing in this quickly is kind of unusual. It's just because of when we started the account. It's very unusual that you publish a brand new account and within literally about six weeks, you're doing a comprehensive revision of that account. And that's what brought in Entertainment Originals as investment instead of expense. So I think we have to wait to answer your question. Hi, Sally Gifford again. I'm a shameless promoter for the NEA, so <laughs> I have to speak up. I just wanted to note, um, yes, as Paul mentioned, we 
uh, paired the BEA AS, ACPSA data with two other reports on how Americans, how the arts affect the economy, how Americans participate in the arts based on a survey we conduct with census, and a new study on, uh, based on general social survey. What are the behaviors and motivators behind arts attendance? So, this is a year uh, in the arts based on 2012 data. We are hoping arts organizations can use it. Um, so yes, it is paired with all three when you look online. I did want to point out, again, Bonnie Nichols' excellent issues briefs that pull out GD um, ACPSA data on um, GDP, new demand, employment, trade surpluses. Um, and someone had a K-12 question. Um, there is uh, an issues brief on K-12, and the finding that surprised me and may surprise others was the uh, vast majority of arts education K-12 through secondary is government-based. So federal, state, local. So that's, you know, if you read one issues brief, that might be one to check out. And it's all available on our website. Thank you. Th thanks, Sally. Uh, government in total is close to 20% of GDP. So it, it, it didn't, it, it, it makes sense that government has a huge role to play in, in the arts. It's, makes sense. Hi. Um, you talk about how you took sports out of it. And mm -hmm. I assume you're talking about the sports industry. How did you subtract the sports when it comes to the actual showing of the sports, events on TV? So the or, revenue... Or conversely, the halftime shows that occur at sports that certainly could be arts and culture. Oh, the halftime show. That's an interesting point. So, so at the Super Bowl this Sunday, we will get a live show. No, that's an interesting point. That, you could argue that that should be there. I don't know how I would get it there and keep out the millions of dollars from the commercials that are going to appear during the Super Bowl. So th that's a fair question. Um, right, so I guess you could try to gauge the, the commercials before and after the performance, and those should be in, maybe. Because the actual the performer, generally for the Super Bowl, isn't compensated. They're usually not compensated. It's the exposure. That's what's important for them. Um, they're usually not paid for, a, for the actual performance at the Super Bowl. So the commercials just before and just after, maybe we should try to bring them in. But I, I don't see how that, would, how that would play out. But Sure, again, again, we would go to that um, company's annual report and they would tell us what they made because of sports. Olympics is easy. Uh, football, baseball is a little bit harder. But they generally will identify. Company reports, I mean, if I'm a stockholder in this company, I want to know how you made your money. And they tell you, generally. And so we use that information to try to create these partials and peel off sports revenue. Was it perfect? No. This is a satellite account. This is not a national income and product account, that's important difference. So to follow up on that, um, are you going to create a satellite account for sports now that it's been excluded? You know, it's an interesting um, question. So would Major League Baseball approach BEA and say that they wanted to find out what, what effect the playoffs have on the U.S. economy. Uh, no, it's not my it's not my job to say yes or no to that possibility. Um, so w over the years, BEA has done several satellite accounts. One of the earliest ones was for transportation, not travel and tourism, just transportation. Um, we have begun exploring other satellite accounts. At one point, we were uh, developing an energy satellite account. The idea was to look at you know the pervasive, you know, the necessary uh, energy for all the industries separate from, from just petroleum refining or something like that. Um, so the, the tool of a satellite account is very powerful, um, but it's, it, it's not costless. So it takes, it takes a while to go through that benchmark IO detail 
and really identify what should be there, what shouldn't be there, and then what should be there in part, and then getting that part in there, then connecting those items to your time series of annual I.O. tables, and then updating it every year and doing a comprehensive revision every five years. Once we publish a satellite account, we don't want it to languish and just sit there. We want this to be a living set of statistics that are updated and upgraded. And so it's a big commitment to do a satellite account. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Paul. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.